Uh, I think we've made some progress, obviously, in some areas that have hurt us in the past, particularly on defense. I think we're better in the front seven. Uh, the junior college quarterbacks that we signed, McQuaker, uh, Louis Famosino, I know those guys have made us better. Uh, you know, I think we've got some guys up front that are better than what we've played with in the past, bigger and stronger, particularly inside. Uh, uh, Roy Lopez and Miles Bean, uh, uh, Deshante Lloyd in particular, I think those guys have had really good camps for us. Uh, you know, we're a little bit still under project and uh, work under project for uh, project and work for for the secondary. You know, I think we still have some concerns there to see how we pan out. But um, however much better we get on defense, that's how much better of a season we'll have. Uh, that's where we've got to make the most improvement. And I think having Coach Spaziani back for a second year in a row, that's a comfort to our players, and they've responded well to him. And I think he's got a better idea of what they can do and where they need to be. Offensively, I, you know, a lot of returning starters, a lot of experience. <coughs> I think we've got a chance to have an exceptional wide receiving core. Uh, we've got a lot of depth there. We've got a lot of guys that have made plays. It's not just one or two guys. We have several guys. Uh, I think the emergence of Jason Huntley in the backfield has really helped us also. Uh, you know, when Larry goes out, there's not a huge drop off now like there was before. And, um, you know, it'll be times we need to get both those guys in the game at the same time. Uh, so again, I think you know we got uh, a chance to have a good football team, but uh, you know you never know what you got to get out there and play. And obviously, we're playing a great opponent, a uh, Pac-12 team that's got a lot of talent, a lot of speed. Uh, they've got a lot of experience returning, uh, so it'll be a, a real challenge for us, and we're looking forward to it. Is there more pressure on the offense to kind of set the tone for your football team, at least early on in the season? You know, Jason, I think where football, where college football is right now, I think offenses have to score if you're going to win. Uh, when you look across the nation right now, scoring offenses are all up, all over the country. And a lot of that's the run pass options. Uh, the rules of the game are really made for the offenses to succeed right now. Uh, I mean, in the past, those run pass options, half the time those would be penalties because there's offensive linemen downfield. You know, but they've really been laxed in those rules now. Uh, the offensive lineman can actually get downfield a little bit and you can still throw it. So there's a lot of disadvantages for the defenses right now. And I think you're seeing that all across the country. So, yeah, we've got to score. I mean, we're, you know, I don't think anybody's going to go out and just shut people down. You don't see 10 to 3 games anymore in college football. It, it's, uh, you've got to score points to win. And your defense has to create things. You, you know, if your defense can score touchdowns off turnovers or they produce turnovers, um, <clears throat> Those are usually the best football teams at the end of the year. Are you pretty confident, though, just with the veteran guys, with Tyler back, um, Larry back? Um, I mean, that has to be the strength of your team that you can put points on the board while your defense maybe, you know, kind of finds their feet or something. Yeah, I, you know, at times we have been uh, exceptional on offense at times. You know, Kentucky last year, we really played well, you know, and there's several games, but we haven't been consistent at it. You know, we haven't week in and week out been a team that's going to put up 30 points, you know, and I always measure it by how many games in the season do you score 30 points or more. Usually that's how many games you're going to win. And I think we did it four, maybe five times last year. We won three games, and, you know, so there it is. And uh, we've got to get more consistent. Now, part of that is, you know, Larry missed half the season last year. Tyler missed the last three games. We have to keep those two guys have to play 12 games for us this year, and uh, that certainly helps. Uh, but with the level of consistency on both sides of the ball, I, I think is pivotal for us. I mean, when you look at the games that we won last year, I and mean, we beat a nine-win New Mexico team, we beat a really talented Lafayette team that went to a bowl game. You know, why can't we play like that every week? And that's the challenge we put forth to our team. Uh, and we'll see if they can be more consistent this year. Just based off the numbers, Arizona State had one of the worst defenses in FBS last season. What have you seen on film that you think you can exploit this Thursday? Well, you know, they've got a new defensive coordinator this year. In fact, they have two new coordinators on both sides of the ball. So there's a lot of unknowns going into this game. You know, is it going to be the same style of defense that they were playing, or is it going to be Coach Bennett's style who came from Baylor? Um, you know, so I think we got to worry more about just ourselves than what they're doing. But, you know, they've got talent. They, they maybe uh, got in shootouts last year in games where they had to pressure more than what they really wanted to and gave up some big plays and things like that. So, you know, that always snowballs on you. So I, I don't think that's any indication of what they will be this year. 
Um, I know I'm really worried about up front being able to protect the passer. Their front is really athletic and really talented. Um, so that'll be a you know a premium for us. Arizona's kind of turned into a, one of the recruiting focuses for your team. So I just wonder, you know, how uh, how important is this game in terms of you know getting some of the players that might be interested in coming here to, in the stadium to see you guys play in person and yeah. some of your Phoenix area players. Well, it helps no matter what because we're going to be seen there, and uh, obviously we do have a lot of players from Arizona and really. You know, the guys that have come from Arizona for us have all had pretty good careers here. They're, they're all playing. They're all, most of them are starting. Uh, you know, so that's a good step forward for us there also. So this game is a huge advantage for us in the recruiting phase of things. Uh, if we go down there and play well, it certainly will help even more. What is it like being the underdog going into this game? <laughs> About like every other game for us. I don't know how many games where we haven't been the underdog. And until our players want to, get fed up with that and do something about it, they're always going to be underdogs. And uh, what I'm trying to get is our players to get a little chip on their shoulder. And I still don't think they're really there. I, I don't think that they appreciate uh, how they're perceived. And I think that can be a strength if they will embrace it. Uh, I talk to them all the time about, you know, when people are talking bad about New Mexico State football, they're not talking about the university. They're talking about you as an individual. When you're a 22-point underdog, which I think we are for this game, they're not talking about the university. They're talking about you as an individual. You're not good enough to play against Arizona State. And that's what I want our players to embrace and get a chip on their shoulder and go out there and play with some rage. And I still don't think they get that. I, I don't think they're there yet. Um, but hopefully we're getting closer, and we'll see if they can embrace that and do something about it. What do you expect from the Arizona State defense? Like, are you expecting them? to really game plan for for Larry as most teams might and then you know it's on your passing game to make some plays what do you expect from them yeah I, I think knowing coach Bennett and watching him from afar I, I think that they will be a really well coached team uh, Jason I think they'll be coached not to give up big plays make you earn it and get down the field um, yeah, I think they'll play very well against the run they'll force us to throw the football and see if we can do it um, I think the biggest change you'll see from them, I, I would bet, is uh, a decrease in explosion plays. Just knowing Coach Bennett and where he's been, how he's always approached the game, that's what always happens. You know, he, he has a great knack for calling the game, for getting them in the right coverage, for changing coverages. Even sometimes a subtle change, they can really trip a quarterback up. Yeah, I think he's one of the more exceptional defensive coordinators in the country. Shifting to the offensive side of the ball with Arizona State, they have a new offensive coordinator as well, Billy Napier. Mm -hmm. um, he comes from like a pro style background. How have you guys prepared? I mean, pro style isn't something you really see nowadays in college football. How have you guys prepared for that in practice? Yeah, it's, you know, you can only prepare for what you think you're going to get. And he also has experience at Clemson where they have a lot of, you know, uh, spread offense uh, mentalities and things like that too. So we really don't know much of what we're going to get from their offense. So again, it's more us taking care of us, making sure we can line up, uh, be sound. And, and when we do pressure, make sure we've got everything covered. Uh, yeah, I think it's more about us just executing our offense and defense. The experience factor of your football team, is, is that maybe a big advantage for you? Because you do have continuity on both sides and maybe you can catch them Kind of well, trying to figure stuff out, even though they have Pac-12 athletes. Yeah, it's. I would say this. It's much more comfortable than it ever has been here because every year we've gone into this with, you know, as many as 12, 14 freshmen playing, and that's not comfortable. <laughs> you know, those guys are not ready at that stage, but we've had to do it because the lack of scholarship numbers here and the lack of talent, to be blunt. But, you know, we don't have that this year. we got all across the board, all of our guys have played in games. Um, there's not hardly any freshmen that really are going to be playing this year. Maybe it's some backup roles, a couple of spots. But uh, so, yeah, that, that is a comfort. I would like to think that we could adapt and change midstream in a game if we had to with the guys that we have right now. Uh, I think we've got more leadership on this team than what we've had. Uh, so, all those things hopefully will help us. You have a lot of Texas players on your team. I'm just wondering if some of them. Maybe the Houston guys have been affected, or how interested, or how affected they have been in, the, in the, what's going on in Houston right now. Yeah, I, I haven't heard uh, that any of them they're having major problems or anything like that. So uh, thankfully, that I don't think has impacted us as much as uh, maybe some other people. But we do have a lot of Texas kids and from those areas, but uh, that that hasn't been a problem with us so far. 
Coach, what is it about Jason Huntley that reminds you of a younger Larry? You know, that's a great question, Adam. I think, uh, you know, people forget, you know, Larry is 198 pounds now and he's strong as a bull and all that stuff. But Larry was 155, 160 pounds when he came here as a true freshman. And Jason's kind of the same way. And Jason's kind of pro progressing the same way that Larry did. I think now Jason's probably 175 pounds. He's put on quite a bit of weight since he's been here. Coach Decker does a great job of developing players for us. Um, so you can just see him get more confident as he gets stronger and bigger. Um, he's very similar to Larry in that he catches the ball really well. He's a real threat out of the backfield to catch the ball. You can line him up as a wide receiver if you need to, and he can go out there and, and execute some things. I think he's going to be really good in the uh, return game for us, returning kickoffs, I think, gives us a weapon back there. Um, he's kind of in that same mold. I think he hit plays with a little chip on his shoulder like Larry did and has. And uh, you know, I, th I think Jason's just scratching the surface of, of what he's going to be. I think really, uh, I, I expect him to have a great year this year, but I think down the road, he's going to turn into another exceptional, exceptional running back here. You have Roy here and then Miles. Um, how, are you concerned about this going against a fast paced offense with, you know, do you, do you feel like you need like maybe one or two more interior guys <laughs> to feel better about the, on the defensive side? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you can never have too many <laughs> too many defensive linemen because of all the tempo teams that you play and, and just depth. Um, we still don't have the depth that we would like to have there, and and we've lost two guys before we even started the season. You know, Derek Watson is going to have another surgery on his shoulder, so. Uh, we're going to lose Derek, and then Derek Abikwe chose. He could have played this year, but he chose to take a red shirt year and have a finger operated on. So um, that's two guys we're missing already. So we, we can't afford injuries there. And uh, we've got to practice really smart with those guys and make sure we keep them healthy. And, and they're going to be in great shape. I mean, they've got to play. They've got to play a lot of games, uh, a lot of snaps. So that's why it's important. Like Calvin Allen was a good addition for us because there's some depth that we didn't have otherwise. We've had to cross train some guys that uh, that could play outside and inside uh, to create more depth for us there in the defensive line. Has there been anyone from this past recruiting class that it, you know as fall campus progress has exceeded the expectation you had for them before they arrived on campus? Uh, you know, I think Dylan Brown, the kicker, has been really good. Now he's going to go through his growing pains like any first time starter, but. Uh, on PATs and field goals, Dylan has been really good through camp. <coughs> I think as the year goes on, he's going to get more and more comfortable. I think he could be a really, really good, solid kicker for us. Trevor Brohard, I think I was really impressed with Trevor when we signed him. I think when I talked with Jason after signing day, I said, this is the guy that, you know, a couple of years from now, everybody will say, wow, how would you get him? You know, kind of like they did Larry Rose. And I, I think Trevor's going to – he'll play this year. Uh, he's obviously not going to start, but he's going to find a role. He's going to play on a lot of special teams. And I think, you know, a year from now, he'll be a guy that everybody will look and say, man, that guy's, you know, really something else. Um, I think we have two young tight ends that are different than what we've had here, uh, Bryce Roberts and Xander Yarbrough. You know, these guys are – well, Bryce is 270-something pounds. We haven't had a tight end like that. And he can run, he can catch, he can do a lot of different things. Uh, so he brings some diversity to our offense. And then Xander's 255 right now. Uh, both are 6'4", uh, you know, so those were two really good gets in recruiting for us. They're both freshmen and redshirt freshmen play the first games this week. Uh, but I think those two guys could, could really be something good for us too. I want to ask about Jonathan and Demarcus and if these guys are limited at all this week, uh, what do you expect? From Jonathan Boone, Boone? yeah. Uh, you know, Jonathan's fighting an ankle that keeps flaring up, and I really don't know. We're going to look at him again tonight. Uh, if we were playing today, I would not play him, you know, because he's still limping a little bit. And, uh, I do. and we got enough depth at wide receiver where it's not a huge deal. I want to make sure he's healthy for the UNM game. Uh, so we'll see how he is tonight. Uh, Demarcus, you know, it still is not practiced, you know, with a hamstring. Uh, I think he will be ready for New Mexico. I doubt that he'll be ready for. Uh, Arizona State. Is that it, Coach, as far as injuries? You're pretty healthy other than that. Though. Yeah, uh, Billy Sharmug, our backup center, uh, has a little bit of a back issue. He's missed the last couple of practices. I think he's going to be ready for this game. Uh, again, he would be playing in a backup role anyway, but other than that, we're yeah, we're pretty good. Have you named captains? That we have not. We have not. I don't, I don't know that we're going to name captains for the year. I think we're going to do it by week okay. and uh, see how guys play and then 
to go that route. You have a, a, a big opener coming up. It's going to be a tough game. Then after that, you're going to play a big rival in New Mexico. Even though you beat them last year, what's it like having that kind of schedule back-to-back? Well, you know, the rival game's exciting. You know, those that's the big game that everybody looks to every year. So uh, I kind of like playing that game early in the season. I, I think it uh, gets the season started off with a lot of energy, a lot of passion. Uh, you know, we very fortunately won that game last year. It was right down to the wire. Um, they're a really talented football team and, uh, you know, a really difficult team on both sides to plan for. You know, it's a blitzing team on defense, so they present some problems. They run the option on offense, which you don't see a whole lot. So um, that's why having a couple extra days of practice, I think, are really good <coughs> for us going into that game, having a Thursday game, having a couple extra days.